Hello everyone, my name is Charlene. My name is Therese. And we're here to present a Muse, a music capturing game. So you're going for a walk and you put on Bose AR glasses and turn on your phone and open up the Emuse app. As you walk with your Bose AR glasses, you will hear a melody to your right. You turn towards the melody to get a better hearing of it. And if you like it, you double tap on your glasses to capture the melody. If you feel the melody is not something that you like, you can shake your head and let it go. And by the end of the walk, you will have to capture a series of melody and compose your own little soundtrack that you experience during your walk. So here's a little video of a uh, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> right. So. Uh, So now we can do the demo. Uh, so the demo is set up where if you take 10 steps and it's in a very high sensitivity for the step counter because we're doing this indoor uh, to trigger a sound. And it's ready for whoever wants to try it out. We have a very simple UI to indicate <coughs> how many melodies you encounter, how many steps you took, and then how many melody you capture. The whole experience is aimed to be phones down, heads up, and just for you to walk. You don't really want to be distracted, first of all. Uh, it's really just to enhance and to kind of capture the moment as you walk. So let me turn, get on the app. There you go. You should connect, and then you can just slip the phone right in your pocket. So this is not head direction dependent, meaning one direction or the other? Doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. So the audio is spatialized. We experiment, with, we experiment a couple of times with spatialized music in order for the user to kind of distinguish uh, between like the new sound and the sound that they uh, capture. Mm -hmm. But during our testing, we do find out it does make the walking experience more uncomfortable because they would like to face the direction they're walking at, and so I'll keep mm -hmm. turning their head around. Yeah. So uh, spatialization in the moving, uh, uh, when they're moving isn't as reasonable for the user to do as yeah. a request, so we cut that out. Yeah, and one thing that the more and more we worked on uh, this game we wanted to focus on is kind of distinguish it from just playing your normal music and have it more of a like meditative and almost reflective experience and really make sure that you're picking the sounds that speak to you so that way at the end when you have this song it's kind of connected to a memory or whatever specific feeling that you're having at the time. One big caveat, all the music that's in the app is something that we compose, and we're not, we're not composer. So <laughs> the music itself isn't, uh, it's like the, the one we pick out that's open source online, and the one that we kind of just like dropped our own like little drum set, drum beat. So they're not uh, a white set of it. So it's not super descriptive of everyone's experience at that time. So don't, don't, don't hate on the music too much. <laughs> yeah. uh, Oh, good. Uh, oh. So implementation evolution. Uh, so throughout our user testing, um, the how's your experience? Is it working oh. well? Yeah, great. So feel free if you want to try it later on. Uh, come on, try it. Uh, originally, we had several implementation in terms of having uh, having specialized music where we describe having the new audio coming in a different direction. Uh, the previous iteration when I first started, the idea is that in order to capture music, we want you to actually face the direction of the music. You kind of be looking at it with your, uh, with the frame because you're hearing in the direction of the sound. Sure, turn it up. Yeah. 
but then as we user test, we realize again, having while moving forward and be and dictate what a user's head direction be is not a reasonable thing to ask. So we cut that part down. Uh, the user just had the option later on to change how many steps they want to take. There's a range between low amount of steps, depending on the environment, being, to a higher amount of steps for the music to be generated. So if going for a long walk, they don't want to be bombarded with a bunch of new music coming up. They still like the longer generation. Uh, if they are indoor, for example, if you just want to take a short walk around the office and it's snowing outside, then you do a short uh, iteration, short generation. Yeah, so one of our main uh, research questions during this process was uh, how we can create a mind space using only audio uh, to make the player more meditative and reflective. Um, so at first, so we drew like a lot of inspiration from a lot of different places. So I think obviously first is Pokemon Go. So originally we were thinking um, have a phone AR component and you walk around and in addition to hearing, the, the sounds also have like a little sprite character where you would point your phone there and then capture on the phone. Uh, but we found that that really drew a person out of their own head and put them in more of a virtual world, which was kind of the opposite of what we wanted. Um, yeah, so then another thing that we started thinking about was meditation and how when people meditate, a very common way to do that is to count to your breathing. So uh, one way that we wanted to implement that with audio is have a, cons a consistent cadence. So you kind of match your steps to it and it's that like rhythmic meditative state. Uh, and we found that it really helped out the users to get into that mindset. Uh, and then during some play testing, we found in the beginning, people were really stressed out and it's a lot of things going on, new sounds, a lot of decisions that they have to make. Uh, and people were saying that was really intense, but the more that they played it, it became almost second nature and uh, players were really able to get into that mindset as soon as they put on the glasses and wanted to make these decisions and make their own creation. So the, <clears throat> the user that we've been asking around, having people who are really into composing music and people who are more interested in like, just having music in their life in general. And one thing that as we work with the instructor, it was the differentiation between composing music and almost like the experience of bird watching, mm -hmm. where you have spur of the moment encounter and you can choose to capture it or let it go. And the, uh, we want to emphasize the feeling of you can sing the music, but you don't want to very sprawl the moment instead of like keep tweaking it and premeditating over the experience and recomposing over and over again. Yeah, so that leads into our next question, which was about control. So how does the level of control that you give the user affect uh, the user experience? So um, as you were saying, we had a lot of different musical backgrounds of play testers. Um, so that can be frustrating for people who don't know a lot about music or it was just kind of changing the experience in a way that we didn't want it. Um, so also if you uh, give the user the option as, of, like as soon as you get a sound, you can change all these different things about it. Uh, it made walks much longer and <laughs> drew people out of the experience because you don't want to wait until the end to be like, oh, that thing that I caught like 10 minutes ago, like what can I do with it? So. It was kind of derailing the experience um, and presenting it more as kind of bird watching experience uh, really helped uh, align everyone's expectations so that everyone would enjoy it and kind of dealing with what you get and making the most about, of what you get uh, also supported our, our goal of having it as like a meditative experience and kind of analogous to life. You just make the most of what you get. and. <laughs> Uh, have something beautiful in the end, so it was really exciting. So the future iteration <coughs> of what we want to do is more, uh, right now the current set of music is at a particular BPM, but sometimes on a slow day you want a slower melody, or if on a fast day you want like a higher pumping one. Uh, we would like to have the option for the user to kind of choose that in the beginning. Uh, ideally, it's an input that's more intuitive, so instead of having them input, so it's hard to, if I tell you a for someone who's not musically inclined, if I tell you, oh, putting into the BPM of your choice, they're not going to be able to kind of have an idea of 140 BPM versus like 120 BPM, how that feels. Instead, we want to be able to incorporate more of the sensors, such as the uh, gyroscope or accelerometer, to kind of like track their head knot to the beat that they want. So if they want a faster beat one, they could like shake their head a little bit faster. If they want a slower beat one, it'd be a mellower head shake. And from the tracking of the beat, 
you kind of pre-select what music you want to be able to offer to the user. Uh, so in the future, we want to be able to um, kind of passively track users' uh, uh, emo emotional state with the physiological sensor that's embedded onto the AR frame. And this way, have a more uh, continuous experience. Yeah, and then right now it's all—it's a very personalized experience. And one thing that we wanted to implement in the future is start to build a community around that. So right now, uh, at the end of your walk, you have this song, and you can just save it for yourself. But in the future, we'd like to have it kind of as an open platform for a community of other uh, users on the app. And then maybe someone has this really nice beat, and then someone else could—they uh, could collaborate and add vocals, or like, and make songs, or just share with your friends. <clears throat> so the whole idea started out with the feeling that music can capture emotion or like a certain moment. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to kind of incorporate that into everyone's life. And that's the goal of in music, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, that's